could you give us a bit of background uh, to the company and yourself? Yes, so um, my background is I've been involved in electronic trading for the last 20, 20 years or so, pretty much since the inception of the fixed protocol. Mm -hmm. um, I was at Robert Fleming's at the time, they asked me to look at this emerging new technology uh, that was coming out of Solomon Brothers and Fidelity. Um, we looked at it and decided it was something that uh, we, we wanted to use and embrace and I've been involved in the technical side of FIX ever since then. Um, Rapid Edition uh, was started uh, when I left Solomon Brothers where I was co-head of electronic trading um, to deliver tools for electronic trading. We were initially a component company making very high performance FIX engines um, and tools very much around the FIX space. We've recently acquired uh, a second business, uh, Debt Technologies, mm -hmm. which is based in Prague, and that's given us a complete, a complete solution rather than a component, and that, I think, is the most significant change that's happened recently. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, you already mentioned Debt Technologies. Recently, Rapid Addition completed its acquisition of yeah. Debt Technologies that specializes in designing, implementing, and supporting electronic trading platforms. Please comment how the acquisition will affect the company and its offering in general. Yeah. Debt Technologies is a fantastic business. It was started by Petra and Jaramir, who remain with the company and are now heading up our development side, mm -hmm. along with Fahim and James, who were already with Rapid Edition and led Rapid Edition's existing production side. Mm -hmm. We've merged the two teams together. Uh, we've got a uh, significant office space in Prague now and a growing team out there for mm -hmm. recruiting. So anybody who's watching this who's interested in a job in Prague, please get in touch. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, we are, we've now got the two teams working together on a joint basis. Some of the IT is clearly going to remain in London because we have some very significant uh, clients here. But you know, the sort of core development of all of that is in Prague now. That's been, you know, it's, it's unusual to find the merging of two companies is actually fun, but just because the team is so fantastic, it has been fantastic, it has been great fun. And Trade Tech Europe is about the ongoing changes in electronic trading environment. What was significant for your company in attending this event? Uh, I think MIFID, the market abuse directives, the cha structural changes that we're seeing in the marketplace, the mm -hmm mandate that's come from the G20 into those regulations that they want to see other asset classes moving on to electronic platforms that's led to a, position, a point where customers are starting to look for complete solutions customers are looking for businesses that have been through equities and can say okay these are the things we learned out of equities these are going to be relevant to the other asset classes um, and you know it was it, useful having brought the two companies together and now having an offering that is a solution and is it, some parts of that solution are entirely complementary to existing infrastructure so for example mm -hmm. our monitoring capability and just being able to show that to the marketplace and what Trade Tech of course does is it brings a large number of participants into a space all at the same time so it's a great mm -hmm. way of seeing a lot of people and we saw a lot of people both uh, old friends and some new faces mm -hmm. and just saying this is what our RA does, this, this is how we can help you and uh, we've had a very positive reception from a great number of people so uh, I think we'll be busy doing follow-up for the next couple of months. What are the issues and challenges you are finding in the industry and how are you providing solutions? Okay. Well I think the biggest challenge is the amount of regulatory change that's coming down. Mm -hmm. That regulatory change you know, comes from yeah, the electronification. So I was also involved in the uh, UK government's foresight paper on the future of computer-based trading and we made a number of recommendations in there and it's very uh, refreshing to see some of those recommendations now coming through mm -hmm. as um, elements of the MIFID regulations mm -hmm. and the market abuse regulations and I think what we're doing is we're we, the industry see yeah, this is a problem for the industry just because there's a lot of stuff to change mm -hmm. and what we're able to do is provide solutions which can address those things taking a headache off some of our clients by mm -hmm. saying okay you need to understand how precision time stamping works and how you might implement a solution that allows you to meet the requirements around that mm -hmm. we've got a solution for you you need to address market abuse and be able to potentially uh, capture it and it's better to be able to capture it in real time mm -hmm. rather than retrospectively and we've got solutions that allow people to do that. What are the trends and advancements 
that we should expect to see electronic trading in the future? Um, I think there's, so there's both big picture and uh, sort of more operational sides. I think on the big picture stuff, we need to look at things like the Capital Markets Union proposals mm -hmm. from the EU, trying to extend the inclusiveness of markets as a fundraising mechanism to bits of to smaller businesses mm -hmm. and to other types of businesses that aren't tr traditionally served by that. And I think that's both an opportunity and a trend. I think that's inevitably going to happen. You also see that those trends in areas like peer-to-peer -peer lending and mm -hmm. so on. If you look at the growth of peer-to-peer -peer lending, it's actually growing in a sort of Moore's Law-like trajectory. It's, an, it's, an ex, it's currently an exponential growth. And it's actually got a doubling period of nine months. Mm -hmm. So that means it's growing like Moore's Law, but at twice the velocity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just if, for example, one lender funding circle, mm -hmm. um, they started off lending a, you know, a few thousand pounds a month, and they're now lending tens of millions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. And if you continue that doubling, that means hundreds of millions soon, and then billions potentially, mm -hmm. which means they become something that you know, the banks need to embrace. Mm -hmm. I think machine learning is incredibly mm -hmm. interesting. You look at some of the recent advances in um, you know, our sort of use of computers in gaming, which is effectively machine learning. You know, when you and I were children, it, we would probably be, you know, the only game that a computer might be able to beat us at was noughts and crosses. Mm -hmm. The doubling and doubling and doubling and doubling meant mm -hmm. that about 15 years ago they surpassed Kasparov mm -hmm. as the best solution to chess. Mm -hmm. And the doubling and doubling and doubling again means that they're now, you know, they've beaten the world champion at Go, the mm -hmm. most complex game mm -hmm. known to man. Mm -hmm. and, you know, capturing those sort of technologies and being able to apply them to assist. So I don't think that machines are ever going to completely replace people, mm. but I think we're able to use these as tools to augment what we're able to do, and I think that's going to reap some profound changes okay. in um, the electronic uh, market space. Mm -hmm. And I think you know, what Rapid Edition's mission is, is to be there helping those technologies and making those technologies easy to use for our customers. For example, what we've done with FPGAs and working with Intel mm -hmm. to get to the point where we've got our next generation stuff will take latency down to the point where mm -hmm. a regular um, non-HFT client mm -hmm. has pretty much the same performance levels as HFTs a year or two ago.